us that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all of our sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us all quickly and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep me in eternal life. Amen. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of light, and to be glorified through all the worlds. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me out of all my terrors. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I call in my affliction. And the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Please be seated for the reading. In one breath, in one gulp of thin, reedy air, one fading and fatigue, red, white, and blue pining, we are told that all of this, this united space of America, belongs to us. And in another breath, one air raid, angry siren, one hawk spit, war cry from hate filled mob, we are told, get out, go back to where you came from, you and your kind, you marred, you stained you low man, woman on the totem pole. And we are pitted against one another in this new world fight club. In one corner, the aging prize fighters of the American dream, holders of picket fence mirages, wavers of flags that witness the force seizures of land, wicked water hoses and boots galloping on black backs. In another corner, the new arrivals, flyweight flesh, fresh blood, weary eye crossers of borders, novices of green cards and status, head tied of holy garb, refugee or traveling free. And we bob and we weave, we engage in bare knuckle scrap matches for a place to call home. We tassel hard for the golden ticket, the dangling carrot, while round us bark the gatekeepers of, and sons of privileges and lineage who move the line and set the bar 
and change the rules and won't let us in. These are the stories of belonging and not belonging, says Alice. And Phoebe says, I am so in pain most of the time I want to go into the closet and lock myself up. Just go up under my bed and hide, but I can't. But I can't because I've come this far by faith, says Marcus. But I can't because we are dealing with a crisis of spirit, says Jesse. But I can't because I yearn for this country to be for everyone, says Alice. Oh, give me shelter in this fractured union. Give me shelter in this fractured union. Stitch up these worn bones. Open my mouth. Rip this silence from my foreign tongue. Move this wedge of indifference. Show me a sign that I am home. Take away our boxing ring of conflict where we bloody each other with pride and prejudice. Somebody put out a welcome mat. Somebody put out a welcome mat. Give me shelter in this fractured union, for I too am a sister. I've walked the earth and I need to settle. Give me space to be, let me be in this united place of America. We will make something out of this too. We are the builders, the creators, and the magicians of our lives. We are the designers and the inventors of our lives, and we will make something out of this too. We strain to understand this new language in our grave and weary lilt, in our haggard cadence, we mouth to one another stark words, distancing, isolation, loss, emptiness. Someone will ask us if we're gonna be all right, and we will tell them only if we believe it. Another will ask us if we're gonna get through this, and we will tell them that we have to want it bad enough to see it. We strain to manage this new way of learning ourselves. See, before the world, the day before the world tilted, I had claimed to be a lover of mankind. I touted my goodwill and my arrogance across my chest, bared my self-righteousness and feel goods, and then when the world placed us in time out, I had to prove it. I had to take only my ration from the market, check on neighbors and phone friends, press my palms against glass to see family, my hellos and my goodbyes muted, my farewells and home goings silenced. I walked these streets I know like a stranger, like a soul outside of herself. I hold my lone woman praise and worship be okay with passing through the same four rooms while Mahalia blankets me in song. How I got over. I've been falling and rising all of these years, but you know my soul sits back and wonder, how did we make it over? I now know that we are the builders. We are the designers, the architects of our lives. We can draft an existence one day, and when it's upended, erase maintain the foundation, and start over the next. We are all in our dojo of life, and this world has become our sensei, and we are stealth students studying this new language, this new thing, meditating and marveling, moving and mourning, marinating and musing. Each day, another chance to practice being human. Each day, another chance to master ourselves. Thank you.
when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Gratefully, gratefully we praise you, O Lord, grateful for the gifts of song and poetry and word and gathering that draw us up into your spirit and among your saints, renewing and reviving our spirit within us renewing and reviving our courage and our sense of direction so we may join your saints, those who surround your throne, who've come through the great ordeal, those who are blessed because they risked persecution, those who are blessed because they stood for justice. Lord God, give us what we need to join the ranks of your saints today and every day. In Christ's name we pray, amen. It's really very foolish to preach after the poet Laurie of Philadelphia has done her thing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, that was so amazing. Thank you so much. How amazing. Today we gather on All Saints Day, two days before an election day, to join into the great communion of saints so they can do what saints do, which is give us the refreshing light of God. Give us the guidance about where we need to be if we are following Jesus Christ. This is what the saints do. They encourage, they give us courage because they went before in witness to our Lord and going before, they mark a way for us, a way wherein we can join them. Because of their courage, their courage that is a sign, a sign of what Christ has done for us in his death and resurrection, which makes us have courage to take risks, to go towards loss, to move into discomfort, for the sake of godliness, for the sake of goodness. Tonight I want to lay before us some saints who can speak to us on this All Saints Day, two days before Election Day. The saints of voting rights, 
the saints who risked their lives and gave their lives for the right to vote. And deeper than just the right to vote, for the dignity of humanity, for the dignity that is claimed by all humans. They stood up. They sacrificed for what was sacred, what was godly. We as church need to reaffirm that voting isn't just this casual thing. It is crucial and embedded in the dignity of what it means to be a self-determining human being. And when it's taken away from a human being, it is an insult. It is a way of saying that you are less than. It's a way of saying that you are less than human. And so we say loudly that voting is inherent to human dignity, inherent to the vision that God has for human flourishing. And so we vote. And so we support voting. And so we encourage voting because dignity requires self-determination. We have a great saint of voting rights here in Philadelphia, Octavius Cato, sometimes pronounced Cato. I've heard it both ways, I will do my best. Octavius Cato was murdered because he was a public figure who advocated for the full humanity of the African American population of our city. He was killed on election day in October in 1871. He was a remarkable human being. In the 1860s, he had raised up a regiment from Philadelphia to fight when Philadelphia was in, sorry, Pennsylvania was invaded by the South. He was a major in the National Guard in Pennsylvania. He had fought for the integration of the trolley system in Philadelphia. He had graduated from the institution that became Cheney University as the valedictorian and went on to teach there. And he was teaching there the day the riots broke out around the election of 1971. The Democratic Party machine was trying to suppress the black vote. Of course, at that time, the black vote voted Republican because of Abraham Lincoln, because of the Emancipation Proclamation. Cato had to mobilize as part of the National Guard, and as part of the National Guard, he needed to own a sword, he needed to own a pistol, and he was a very public figure, very well known from his sporting expertise and his advocacy and activism. He'd helped to integrate baseball in Philadelphia. He was a famous cricketer. And this man fighting against the riots, fighting to quell the riots as a member of the National Guard was shot dead by Henry Kelly, who then went on to escape arrest for six years and when he was arrested, he was acquitted. No murder there. That pattern, that pattern, the one who stood for justice is denied justice. The one whose blood cries out for justice gets no justice because he was an African-American citizen of this country. We see this pattern of voter suppression haunting this country for the next 100 years and beyond to today. I lift up Fannie Lou Hamer. Octavius was a martyr, Fannie just a saint. Fannie Lou Hamer, one of the great leaders of Freedom Summer in Mississippi. Fannie Lou Hamer who 
organized the women in her town to take a bus to vote in 1961. They were turned away by a literacy test. And by the way, this literacy test, a Duke professor gave to a hundred of his colleagues, professors, university professors, 78% of them couldn't pass it. We know about the literacy tests. We know about the poll taxes. We know about the ritual humiliation of people trying to do their civic duty. We know about voter suppression as a long history of white supremacy in this country. So Fannie Lou Hamer takes her bus and gets turned away. And on the way back, she's stopped by the police. And they fine each person on that bus $100. This is 1961. $100, why? Because the bus is too yellow. The bus is too yellow. Not just voter suppression, voter intimidation. A trying to destroy people for exercising their right. Fannie Lou Hamer was thrown out of her job on the plantation where she worked. The owner of that plantation took everything she owned. But did Fannie Lou Hamer stop? No, she did not. No, she did not. Fannie Lou Hamer organized, became the leader of Freedom Summer, became the leader of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, changed the world. It took her from 61 to 68 to get this done, but this woman with barely an education, this woman who'd had a forced hysterectomy by a white doctor, rose up to claim the dignity that was rightfully hers, and it is in her footsteps, it's in Octavia's Cato's footsteps. It's in Medgar Evers' footsteps. It's in James Lee Jackson's footsteps. It's in the footsteps of Schwermer, Cheney, and Goodman that we walk to the polls. That path to the polls was won by blood and toil and sweat and love. Love in the dignity of God's vision of humanity. This is laid out for us in the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are Jesus' marching orders to those who would be his disciples. If you want to hear a great sermon on this subject, check out Ann Thatcher's from this morning. It's online. Marching orders for a disciple. They are a reversal, a turning away from the prosperity message of Deuteronomy. Where in Deuteronomy, you are blessed if you are rich, if you are, you are blessed if you have property, you are blessed if you have status, or if you have won honor in combat. None of that. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the meek. It's an exact reversal of what our secular world teaches brings honor and blessing. What brings blessing is life in the footsteps of Jesus, risking persecution for love, risking rejection for justice, risking social standing for the kingdom. And so we are encouraged, given courage, to depart from the wide path to the narrow path, the path of witness, the path of the saints. Just yesterday, I was in Malcolm X Park on the west side. I was doing my work as a protest chaplain. That's a group of clergy who attend marches to give spiritual support and aid to people whose hearts are breaking over the death of 
fellow citizens like Walter Wallace Jr. And there we were in Malcolm X Park and a young man came and stopped by me. And I was wearing a bright yellow hat that said clergy on it. And my friend Lori Hershey was wearing a bright yellow cap that said clergy on it. And he asked us, what are you doing here? I've been noticing you in the crowd all along this march and I'm just curious why you are here. And Lori and I gave the same answer. We are here because Jesus would be here. We are here because Jesus is here. Jesus is to be found. Jesus is to be found with those who are persecuted, with those who thirst for righteousness, with those who cry out for justice, with those who are the humble of the earth is Jesus to be found, and his followers are found with him. That is where the saints lead us. That is where the saints are to be found. Let us honor them by adjusting where we are to be found. Let us honor them by finding ourselves voting in two days, encouraging others to vote, celebrating voting, reminding each other of the sacred quality that comes from humanity determining its future in community. So my friends, on this All Saints Day, let us be encouraged by the cloud of witnesses all around us, the cloud of witnesses who draw us on in the Spirit's tether and call us to rise to the dignity we have in God. Amen.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord. That we may depart this life in your faith and fear, and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Lord God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, triumphed over the powers of death and prepared for us our place in the new Jerusalem, grant that we, who have this day given thanks for his resurrection, may praise you in that city of which he is the light and where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 
Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts, and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of the bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary. Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives, that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now at this time on All Saints, celebrate all souls, in which we remember all of our beloved friends and family and acquaintances who have died in the past year. Maybelle Ball, Marsha Bingler, Byron Buggage, Maureen Buggage, Ray Berza Kelly, Carol Chewy, Sybil Mary Chadwick, Feliz Antonio Clavijo, Debbie Clemens, Bettina Clowney, Raymond Crawford, Dottie Crow, Jean Davenport, Ruth Dubois, Frank Igla, Dominique Remney Fels, Martin Fisher, George Floyd, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Al Good Sr., Cookie Green, Dr. Lorna Green, Jane Grigger, Carolyn Hale, Keita Woodward Haran, Beth Waldrop Harris, the Reverend William Harder, Sherman Hawkins, Ann Hill, Shirley B. Jones, Lily Jordan, Dale Kinley, Viola Louchman, Charles Pete E. Mather III, Ned McCook, Jeff Mecklin, Rhea Milton, John Mondello, Gretchen Nicholas, Sierra Parker, Norm Platnick, Robert J. Reynolds, Ted Richings, Eric Rivers, Betsy Rope, Jake Rope, Cortland Mercer Schmidt, William Skinner, Glenn Walker Stark, Karen Cady Stevens, Robert F. Stock, Ruth Strasbach, Ella Torrey, Christopher Terman III, Corny Walton, John Walton, Andy Weinmiller, Catherine Wisman, Carol, Justin, and those that we name now. May light perpetual shine upon them. And now let us turn to the general thanksgiving on page 7. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. 
but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And as this is um, our dear Anne Thatcher's last service with us, we are going to do our litany of farewell together on page 8, if you'll join me. People of God, I bid you now pray for the saving presence of our living Lord in this world. Christ is risen. In this church. Christ is risen. In this community. Christ is risen. In the hearts of all faithful people. Christ is risen. But especially I bid you pray and give thanks now for the Reverend Anne Thatcher, who is leaving our midst. For expectations not met and grievances not resolved. Lord, have mercy. For wounds not healed and anger not dissolved. Lord, have mercy. For gifts and promises not kept. Lord, have mercy. And also for this portion of your pilgrimage with these people in this place for friendships made, celebrations enjoyed, and for moments of nurture. Thanks be to God. For wounds healed, expectations met, gifts given, promises kept. Thanks be to God. For bread and wine, body and blood. Thanks be to God. And so, to establish a home in another place with other members of the family of Christ, to continue the journey with new friends and new adventures. To minister in wisdom and experience, confidence and compassion. With our faith in you, our hope for you, and our love of you. Go in peace. The Lord watch between us while we are absent from one another. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Reverend Ann will give us her final blessing. <laughs> May you go forth this day emboldened by the power of the Holy Spirit, emboldened by the witness of the saints to spread the love of God in a way that you never have until this time now. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you all. Amen. Well, why don't you sit for a moment? <laughs> First of all, I just want to say it's been such a joy to be a part of St. Martin's, and it's, it's with sadness and joy that I go to my next call. And I also want to take a moment to say a huge thank you on behalf of St. Martin's to our folks today so who have given us so much. So first of all, back here we have um, Ellen Strange, Valerie Gay, Lee Smith, and Aaron Graves, and Lynette Sudler and Jim Hamilton.
do, so hold on. Um, we'll have a rousing ending from our fabulous music musicians up here. And if you feel like moving around, I'm sure I will be dancing up here. Um, feel free to do so. Stay in your pew. Um, and then after the music is done, we are going to dismiss, some of you have been with us on Sunday mornings, the exiting will be out the Willow Grove door. And so this side, when you exit, you're going to go out and down the side aisle. This side, I ask you to wait for this side to finish exiting first as respecting space with each other. And then this side, we'll dismiss after that, keeping your social distance. And uh, we'll be out on the terrace. And I think it stopped raining. Thanks be to God. <laughs> So, let us stand for this dismissal. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us all with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.